Hey, this is Andrew Lim inviting you to go out on a limb. Hola from Uruguay. Yes, I finally made it here. Always wanted to come here. I'm actually here in Montevideo uh, in a neighborhood called Puntas Caretas, uh, which is a, a really popular neighborhood. A bit bougie, uh, you know, um, upscale, uh, but it's, it's, I think it's very uh, local based. I mean, they're actually, you know, a bunch of boys playing soccer. Uh, behind me but anyways I've always wanted to come to Uruguay because uh, I've been to Argentina a few times and like you know a lot of the tourists uh, that visit Argentina they would actually come over to Uruguay just for a day trip uh, to visit Colonia which is uh, their popular uh, UNESCO World Heritage Site but they usually would just you know take the ferry come over for a day and that's it and they're done with this country but I've decided actually this country deserves more than just a day trip uh, given all that it has achieved so I've decided to actually come here and spend a week here uh, just to soak in and immerse in the local culture and see what I can discover uh, just a few fun facts about Uruguay I mean first of all it's a really really progressive country I mean this country uh, abolished the homosexuality or decriminalized the homosexuality act uh, way back in 1934 I mean 1934 uh, in South America which is like what heart of machismo so I think this is really impressive uh, also it's actually um, the population itself is small it's only about three and a half million people which is like half the size of New York I have to say but it's the largest um, consumer of beef in the world so so you know um, not surprisingly, there's actually a lot of good asado places here that serve beef. Too bad I don't eat beef myself. Otherwise, you know, I'll just take you to a few of these uh, great uh, grilled places for some really great steak. Um, but yeah, but they actually do uh, eat a lot of beef here. Uh, they love their mates. Uh, they are actually they hosted the first World Cup. For those of you who love your World Cup, they actually won twice. Uh, the people here, I think, are really friendly. Um, not as cheap as in terms of cost. It's not as cheap as Argentina, however, because uh, the economy here, unlike Argentina, is actually pretty stable. Um, so yeah, so come go on the limb with me. We will explore a few places throughout this lovely country of Uruguay. Uh, we're gonna be here. We're gonna go to uh, Punta del Este, of course. It's a popular beach town. Uh, we are actually entering the busy season now, uh, but not there yet. So uh, hotel rates are still really reasonable, which is why I'm here. And we're gonna go to Colonia, of course, where everybody or people that have been to Uruguay have actually been, or maybe the only place that they've been uh, within Uruguay is Colonia. So come go on a limb with me and we'll explore this lovely country together. Folks, before we start, kindly hit the subscribe button and the notify button for new contents that I upload weekly. Muchas gracias. So let's start our tour of Montevideo with uh, Punta Caretas, which is a uh, barrio or neighborhood here in Montevideo. It's actually more of a residential upscale meets commercial neighborhood where, you know, it's tree lined streets with beautiful homes, you know, a couple of dogs that you can actually annoy for them to bark. <coughs> <laughs> that was my highlight uh, and also a uh, big shopping mall here so Punta Caretas has a great shopping mall I mean it's typical shopping mall that reminds you of that you know back in the US uh, Canada anywhere in the world actually uh, it has a uh, food court uh, that you can actually uh, eat a quick meal of course mostly uh, fast food here you have the Sparrows and you have your McDonald's as well uh, but what I love about this shopping mall is this great big uh, grocery store, supermarket, uh, where you can actually get fresh fruits, you can get salads, which really matters in a meat-heavy country. And, and there is also a 146 euro lighthouse here in Punta Caratas that you can visit. By the way, there are many lighthouses here in Uruguay. 
Republica Argentina is an avenue that the locals love to come uh, just to stroll, jog, exercise because it's literally uh, running uh, along the sea, the Atlantic Ocean of course, not really the sea. Uh, and here, you know, speaking of uh, beaches, there's actually a great number of beaches in Montevideo that can be, uh, you know, reached on foot. Uh, because this city is actually blessed with a number of beaches and of course they are not all turquoise blue water this is you know the Atlantic Ocean after all like Playa Ramirez here but that doesn't stop locals from coming here to swim or even just to like you know play soccer uh, which is a big thing here in Montevideo uh, or just chill and uh, relax uh, for the afternoon when the sun is out So Plaza Independencia is really the name of Montevideo's most important plaza. Um, here, you can actually see a few key sites. And this square was designed in the 1830s by Carlo Succi, uh, inspired in the Rue de Rivoli in Paris. And the Eastern Europe style building in the back really adds some color to this square. Speaking of building, Salvo Palace, uh, it's located uh, in the square as well and it's really popular. It was designed by architect Mario Palanti, uh, who is an Italian immigrant living uh, in Buenos Aires that used a similar design for his Palacio Barolo in Buenos Aires uh, that, to build this uh, building. And it was actually finished in 1928. For a brief moment, it was actually the tallest building in Latin America. So architect Carlos Succi, the same guy who actually built the plaza, had built this theater as well uh, way back in 1856. Uh, so this 166-year-old theater is still uh, the venue for all the shows uh, in Montevideo. Every uh, major city has a pedestrian-only shopping street and the one here in Montevideo is called Sarandi. And here the locals come out, you know, just to shop, sit around, hang around, um, just to enjoy uh, the beautiful city of Montevideo. The city also has a great number of parks uh, for you to relax in, uh, parks with fountains, a park with uh, structures, uh, sculptures, monuments, whatever. It's just a pretty green city, I have to say. And also, uh, the uh, wall art and the graffitis are really outstanding. Located in the older part of town and it's a great place to come uh, if it's raining, it's a place, a market called uh, Mercado del Puerto. So it used to be a produce and meat market, but today uh, it's actually called the Harbor Market and there aren't quite as many of those uh, produce stalls and meat stalls, but instead it holds a good range of restaurants with counters facing in towards you know, the barbecue where people can actually sit and enjoy one of Uruguay's most uh, traditional dishes, asado, um, as well as you know, other types of meals, uh, usually with live entertainment. <laughs> Another market newer and perhaps more diverse than Mercado del Puerto is Mercado Agricola de Montevideo, uh, which is a popular market offering uh, not only local produce and groceries, you actually see quite a bit of groceries. You also see uh, gift shops, uh, you see a great food court to eat and specialty stores uh, where you can actually buy uh, things that are unique to uh, Uruguay.
if you are into sweets, uh, the pastries here are really popular. Uh, actually, there's quite a few uh, shops that are selling uh, pastries. And also, if you want to get the popular uh, gemstone in Uruguay, which is the Amitas, is that how you pronounce it? Amitas, yeah, stone. Uh, this is actually where you can buy uh, affordable, they're all affordably priced uh, Amitas stone uh, to collect and bring home. Just remember, uh, you have to check in your luggage. No, no carry on with those stones. So overall, um, this is a, a great market to explore as well, uh, especially if the weather is uh, not as uh, great as one would like when visiting a foreign city. So overall, you never run out of things to do in Montevideo. Uh, you know, you find pockets of gem here and there in the city. And actually some of the neighborhoods really remind me of Buenos Aires, which I think uh, Uruguayans will probably hate me for saying this. Uh, but some of uh, the corners definitely remind me of its neighboring city, Buenos Aires. But whatever you do, just do not come to Montevideo on a Sunday. So it looks completely dead on a Sunday. I mean, just look at this. It's like a ghost town. So visit Montevideo any day you like. Just don't come on a Sunday. <laughs>